<laughs> I'll just say that through this because um, this isn't a Christmas message that I'm going to share this morning. Uh, that we, we have a few minutes here left and I'm going to just hit a few things. We're still in our teachable series. And uh, um, I want to, if you would go with me to Proverbs chapter, let me find it here. If you get to the book of Proverbs, you'll, be a, you'll have a good start. Proverbs chapter 9, if you would please. And we're talking about being teachable, and I, I'm going to get into uh, David and Bathsheba again here um, this morning, and I want to just bring out a couple of things that the Lord's been uh, showing to me. Let me know this, that you, there are times in your life or how many have experienced this? I know I have. Where somebody expressed truth to you, you read something in Scripture, you uh, heard in a message sometime, or the Lord somehow got across to you a word that was a little bit, uh, well, it was tough on your flesh and your mind. But you applied that word, and you're thankful for where you're at today. And... Uh, I heard a minister, a well-seasoned minister, years ago say this, and I adopted it for myself, not because necessarily at the time I had experienced it as a minister, but I saw the principle as a truth, and then over the years as I've continued to think about that statement, as it's come up, I've just seen that it is truth over and over again. But he said, some messages will make you shout and be happy, and uh, they bring joy when you're hearing them. Some messages you hear and you don't, it's kind of solemn, you know, you're listening, it's more intense, you can tell um, that, that uh, people around you and yourself, you're more introspective, you're thinking about and the truth is hitting harder inside, but later you can rejoice over what you heard, amen? How many have noticed this? it's the nature of the flesh? The flesh as its nature likes to spend money on what it wants right now. The flesh as its nature is not really usually by nature a saver, right? For the most part, I know there's different personalities, but just in general, think about something that you really like, you really want. But how many know this? The flesh is, is this way. It'll be mad that it didn't get what it wanted, but if you make it do what it's supposed to, it'll look at the savings account 20 years from now, and it'll act like it did it. <laughs> How many have noticed that? You know? Oh, man, look what we did. And, you, and you, you know, your flesh is such where you have to go, shut up, stupid. <laughs> that wasn't you. That was the grace of God inside of me. Amen? So... These are, this series is kind of that way, but what I've noticed is when, you're, when you are correctable and teachable, your life gets better. Now, I'm not talking about gullible, and I'm not talking about everybody that shares an opinion, you listen to it and follow it. I'm talking about you're allowing the Holy Spirit through the Word of God to teach and instruct you. You're allowing the Holy Spirit through the Word of God and the ministry gifts that God has placed in your life, whether you're, uh, where He's called you to a church or whatever the case may be, and those ministry gifts that are over you in speaking, you allow the words of God to impact you and change you. When you're open, when you're pliable, and you're receiving those things, what takes place is, and Heidi was talking about it earlier, there becomes a storehouse within you of the seed of the Word. And when you're walking through the course of your life, those words are supposed to come out of your mouth and out of your expression through this physical body to the earth. You know, we're really, the, the scripture doesn't say go witnessing. It says be a witness. Now you can go, there's a go in there. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, I've knocked door to door and preached the gospel to people. It's not the most effective thing that I've ever done, but I did lead people to the Lord. You know, mostly you just get the door shut or, you know, cussed out or something, you know. Um, that's what happened to me anyway. Um, 
But, but it, it is a way to be a witness. Our whole life is to be an expression of the resurrection. Okay? Our entire life. See, the house of God is not what we're in right now. You are the temple of the living God. Paul said, Christ in me, the hope of glory. Notice he didn't say, Christ out in the universe, the hope of glory. He said, Christ in me, the hope. In other words, Paul also said to the Corinthians, Know ye not that you are the temple of God? Isn't that amazing? I mean, that's when you start to get this understanding and this revelation that Paul brought out by the Spirit of God through him, you begin to realize, wait a minute, I, God's not distant from me. This will, see, everybody in, in the government needs this revelation. I said everybody in the government needs this revelation that God is there. He's not way out there somewhere. He's in you. God, if God is, if you're born again, God is in you. You won't just do anything you want to do. Because you're aware that somebody else is there. So the scripture puts it to us like this, that everything is what before the Lord? Naked. So now watch this. People hear that and they're like, they cringe. I can almost feel it, you know, inside like, Oh, that means he knows what I did. Yeah, he does. And yet, he still pursues you and loves you. And that ought to be a sign to you, hey, maybe I should get to know this guy. Maybe I need to get to know this Savior, Jesus Christ, and walk with him. Because the reality is, is that he made you, he formed you. You know that song we were singing? He's he's singing over us. Do you know... That the reason why many times people's lives are so screwed up is because they never yielded to the maker and the creator of all things. And so they're bumping through life in blindness rather than yielding to the one who had a plan before you were born. Now sometimes that's because of ignorance and sometimes it's just flat rebellion. They're just rebellious. What do you mean by that? They just, no, I'm not doing what you want, God. I'll do whatever I want. And you know what the thing about God is? He'll let you. Do you want to know why? Because he doesn't want you to love him because you have to. He wants you to love him because you want to. Amen? It's an interesting kind of paradox. I don't know if that's the best word, but the the tension we live in in this life. And it's not going to go away, okay, until the Lord returns. Amen? It's just not going to go away. Why? Because as long as this earth turns and Christ is not back ruling and reigning, the enemy is going to have influence and you're going to have free will. Now, when the Lord returns, free will will go bye-bye. Amen? The Bible says what? Every knee will and every tongue will confess. Yeah. That Christ is Lord. And so, in that, we get the opportunity on this earth to express faith in a Uh, by controlling or using our will that he's given us, our free will, to yield to him. See, personally, I would rather bow now than have an angel put his sword in the back of my knee. People, see, now we have a whole generation too that's like, no, God doesn't, nobody will go to hell. (laughs) You better read closer. I'll just put it to you like this. Nobody preached more on hell than Jesus. Nobody. None of the other preachers did. Jesus did, though. And it's real. Amen? So we get this opportunity to be teachable here. We get this opportunity to be pliable here. We get this opportunity here while we're on earth to express faith in the grace that has been shown to us. Now, the Lord's not angry. He's not upset. He's not, he doesn't have, a, a, he's not boiling over on the throne. He believes that Jesus paid the full price for sin, but he will wait for humanity to respond. And so we get to be teachable. Watch this now in Proverbs 9, verse 7. It says this, He who corrects a scoffer gets shame for himself, and he who rebukes a wicked man only harms himself. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Now, you have to discern who you're talking to. 
If you can tell that you're trying to share with somebody about the Lord and the love of God and the importance of serving Him, and it's just going in one ear up and out the other, or they're just arguing every point with you, then you just need to walk away because you're just going to hurt yourself. In other words, you're wasting your time at that point. It's better to walk away, pray, and believe God to send laborers across their path, even if it is you at a later date, than it is to sit there and argue over and over again. That's what Proverbs is telling us. But when it comes to a teachable man, when it, be, when it comes to a wise man, a wise man will actually look at somebody who brings hard truth to them and go, man, I love you. Do you see that? Okay, what do most people, what's your natural response when somebody comes and corrects you? All right, I'm just going to go right here then. What's your natural response when your spouse comes to correct you? (laughs) Well, I know you too, buddy. (laughs) But a wise man or woman will go, I love you. That's good. You're right. I shouldn't try and run over that, that other vehicle that just cut me off. (laughs) you're right honey you're just trying to save my life thank you (laughs) amen goes well that's what a wise person does they go oh i need correction see a teachable person realizes they don't know everything we live in a culture today that has a lot of knowledge and we also live in a culture that's really puffed up and one of the marks of christianity is humility You know, people say, you know, we want to see signs and wonders. It would be a sign and a wonder if the church would walk in love with each other. In fact, Jesus said that will be the one thing that tells the world that we're Christians. Isn't that interesting? It, It wasn't everything else. It was that one thing. See, a mark of a Christian, the mark of character in a, in a person, the character of God, one of them is teachableness, humility. It's what Jesus said, I am meek and lowly of heart. He didn't say, I'm hard, prideful, and resistant. He said, I'm meek. Now, don't, don't confuse meek with weak. Meekness is a hard attitude. It's a pliability that you have. You're teachable. When you hear this, you don't just read over scriptures that are in the Bible and go, no, I don't, I don't know about that. Amen? You don't, just, you don't just ignore scripture when it's being shared. If you're teachable, you're pliable. And when you're pliable, you're not hard. How many have uh, ever worked with a, you know, concrete sets after a while? You know what I mean? It sets. It has a workable period where you can work it. How many have ever done any sort of art, like pottery, clay, anything, like you worked with any of that kind of stuff? At some point, if you leave it out and the air just gets to it over and over, how many know that it isn't pliable anymore? It's not workable. So... The Bible talks about the fact that he is the potter and we are the clay. So is God on the wheel with you going, ouch, this, this, this clay is hard. It hurts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Is that what he has to deal with? Or is he working with you and he's like, okay, we're pliable. Yeah, we got issues here. Yeah, we got things we have to deal with, but we're pliable. Uh, when I was in high school, I took ceramics and I took, I think, all of them. In fact, I, took, I became an intern, or not an intern, but a, a student, whatever, teacher, helper. But I got kicked out because I got in a fight with my teacher. Because I wasn't pliable. Anyway, <laughs> that was in high school. Mr. Claridge, love that guy. He's probably like, I don't like that guy so much. If he knew me now, he'd like me. I had problems back then. So anyway, but I ended up getting kicked out of that. But when we worked with that clay, when you had that clay on the wheel and you're kicking the wheel we had had some electric ones but we had a kick wheel and you're working with it what are you always adding to that clay water why because it's sand if it gets dry it can eat your skin away 
you know? And so we're working with all these tools. But when we, before we'd put it on the wheel, we'd have to knead that clay. Why? We're getting air bubbles out of it. Why? Because if you go to fire that pot when there's an air bubble inside, what will happen? It'll break, right? It'll crack. And so there are people, and, and this is where the Lord has us right now, where God wants to take us maybe to the next level or the next place in our lives that we know that he's given us promise about in our lives. But he knows if he puts you in the fire right now, there's air bubbles in there. We would do this. We would take a string or like a, almost like fishing line, I guess it was, and we would run it through that clay on all sides. You know, God will do that to you. It hurts, but he'll do it. Why? Looking for air bubbles so that when it was placed, the pot was actually placed in the kiln, what doesn't happen? You actually have a product that comes out that's doing, designed, ready for use for what it was designed for, whether it be a plate, a bowl, a cup, a vase, whatever it is, and that's the way it is with us and the Lord. We have to be pliable and workable with him. Amen? Amen. We have to be in that place. Now watch this. And uh, he goes on to say this in verse 9. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Well, I thought he was already a wise man. In other words, we don't know it all. Do you see that? Well, if he's a wise man, why does he still need wisdom? Because the idea here, the thought here, the, the instruction and the, and, the, and the truth that's being brought across is that we are always going to need instruction here. Always. Because guess what's not going away while, w- until Jesus comes back? The enemy. And guess what else is not going away? Your flesh. Your natural person. So we are always going to need truth. We are always going to need wisdom. We are always going to need instruction, correction, rebuke. Come on. We are always going to need those things. Now, if you hear these messages and you're like, yeah, I think the Lord is the one who's called me to be the rebuker. You are not listening. (laughs) And if you're sitting there thinking, because it's the nature of the flesh to do this, you want to pull this thought down, I know a few people that need to hear this. You know, I should have them go back online and listen later on. You have missed it. Say this with me. Say, the message is for me. Amen? It's for me. I'm talking about me. Do you know how many times the Lord corrects me when I'm preaching? I just don't tell you. Well, you don't come tell me every time he corrects you, so. (laughs) In other words, we need to be teachable, and a wise man will still be wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For by me your days will be what? What? multiplied and the years of your life will be added to you in other words if you want to live the way you're supposed to live and have multiplied days and added years then you need to be what teachable you need to be pliable you need to be able to be taught brought you need to have this mindset of god show me show me more light Give me more wisdom. I want to function and operate in my marriage with my kids, with my business, with my work, with my employees, with my... Come on, think about this. You have an answer, God, for every area. You have an answer for my physical body. Come on. Amen. You know, not all sickness... Sometimes sickness and disease or problems in a body is because the way we're treating it. It's not because it's just the devil. You know what I mean? There, we know that the, there, there wouldn't be sickness and disease if the enemy wasn't here. We understand that because that's where it all came in. How many notice this, that in Genesis, there's not an account of the day that God created cancer? It's because he didn't. He doesn't have any to give. Come on, think with me. He doesn't have any to give. Amen? So he's not dispersing it. He's not handing it out. The enemy is working in this earth. How many know God doesn't have depression? 
He doesn't have suicide. Come on. He doesn't have colds or flus. You never notice that the flu is never called the heavenly flu? It's always called like the Hong Kong flu or the swine flu or, you know what I mean? It's something like that. It's never uh, Jesus of Nazareth flu. It's never anything like that. God doesn't have those things so he can't give them. When we walk in obedience to him and we're pliable and instructable, then we can, be, uh, it, we can come to the place of, you know what, a person that is teachable is a repentant person. They don't, you know, it came to a point in my life where I went, Lord, I'm wrong, you're right. And that's when my life changed. You say, did you believe in Jesus? Oh, yeah, I believed him. I can tell you stories, but I don't want to say it in front of my kids. <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you anyway. I was at a party one time in high school, <laughs> and we're in a garage, you know, unattended by parents. And uh, we were passing a, a pipe around. We were smoking weed is what we were doing. And Jesus came up in the conversation. I mean, we're all high as a kite. You know, and we think we're hilarious. And we're passing this thing around, and somebody says, you believe in Jesus? You know, how does Jesus get in the middle of that conversation? It's not like we were, it's not like we're at a church service and the worship leader is leading worship. We're in a garage hiding. This was before the days of it's recreational, it's medical. We, none of us had green cards, okay? None of us, all right? None of us did. But this was before, long before that. And all of a sudden, while we're taking hits off a pipe, Jesus comes up. How? My parents prayed for me. My grandparents prayed for me. So what happens? The Holy Ghost comes walking through. An angel goes, what about Jesus? <laughs> Throws it in the mind. And one person goes, you guys ever think about Jesus? Man. And I'm standing there going, what? And I, I made this statement. I said, oh, I wholeheartedly believe in him. These words came out of my mouth, but I'm not serving him. I said that. Do you know it wasn't maybe months later I got saved? I gave my life to the Lord. And the rest is history. So whoever you're believing for, God has a way. And you know, you know what I figured out about God? He doesn't care how high you are. He can get your attention. He can. I love it. I love the Lord. He's so good. I know. Have you ever watched the, the testimony of the guy from Corn? The, the former guitarist from Corn? He was snorting cocaine or whatever, or meth or something, through $100 bills and reading scriptures, trying to find an answer. And now he's delivered and free from drugs and all that. God doesn't, he's not, God's not in heaven going, how will I ever get past heroin to, to reach that person? What is he doing? He's going, I can get, he can go through the mall. He doesn't even, it, it is not even a hindrance or even a, a boundary to him, a barrier to him. The only thing that is a barrier to him that he will not violate is the free will of the individual. Nobody will be able to stand before God and go, I just didn't know. It won't happen. It doesn't exist. Or it's not fair or any of those other things. None of that will happen. So he goes on to say this. He says, if you are wise, you are wise for yourself. And if you scoff, you will bear it alone. If you, let's skip down to uh, Proverbs chapter 29. Watch this now. He says this, Proverbs 29 verse 1. Do you have that? Uh, can you switch that one up, Jessica, to Proverbs 29 verse 1? <clears throat> it says, he who is often rebuked and hardened his neck, do you get the picture here? Will suddenly be what? And that without, isn't that interesting? I am glad I did not do that. And you say, does that happen? I know people it's happened to. 
I know people that has happened to. What does the, when you think of a hardened neck, what do you think of? A hardened neck. Have you ever heard of a, that person's just stiff? Hardened neck. In other words, what? I'm going to do what I want to do. And nobody can tell me anything. You are right. But there's another side to that coin. We have free will. We can do what we want. But there will be a harvest. Always. Now, sometimes people don't realize this because they think, well, um, uh, they think, well, no, it's, it, you know, I've been living like this for a long time or I've been doing this or that for a long time and nothing's ever happened. It does not mean the seed is not growing. It is growing. It is, as long as we're on this planet, Jesus said, or the Lord said this in Genesis, seed time and harvest will not cease. And a lot of times people think naturally. They just think about natural seeds, spiritual seeds. The longer you harden yourself to the Lord, the, the longer you resist Him, you can get to the place where it says here, it says, if you harden your neck, you will suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Uh, Proverbs 6.12 says this, A worthless person, a wicked man, walks with a perverse mouth. He winks with his eye. He shuffles his feet. He points with his fingers. Perversity is in his heart. He devises evil continually. He sows discord. How many know you don't want to do that? Therefore his calamity shall come, what? Suddenly, suddenly he shall be broken without what? Without remedy. You know I wrote this message like two and a half weeks ago. And I just haven't been able to get to it. Must be for today. In other words, there's a hardness in a person. Now, now let's not just apply this to natural things. Let's apply this to spiritual things because that's, that's the main source here. In other words, this is a person who continually rejects, continually comes against, continually rejects what God's hand in reaching out and reaching out and reaching out. And what happens is people blame God for their own decisions. I don't even have time right now to get into it. I'm not going to try and get into David. You know, we looked at this two weeks, three weeks ago about Saul. And then last week we looked at um, David. And we talked about the fact that Saul sinned against the Lord and so did David. But the difference between Saul and David was what? It was repentance. Saul, what he did is he, he was, Saul had more fear and insecurity about people than he should have and what they thought. And it caused him to reject the word of the Lord. But what Saul didn't do, Saul's greatest uh, issue there wasn't the fact that he rejected uh, uh, or that, that he just disobeyed. The, the greatest problem Saul had is that he never repented. He never, he never went to the Lord and said, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm going to change. Uh, first of all, I've sinned against you, Lord, and I shouldn't have. Secondly, I'm going to make it right. I'm going to make the right decision now. That's what repentance is. It's just, it's just turning around. It's changing the way you do things. Now, David slept with another man's wife, got her pregnant, and then had the husband murdered. But what did David do? David said, I've sinned against the Lord. When the prophet and the word of the Lord came to him, David didn't go, you don't know how hard it is to be king. David didn't say, you, do you know what kind of pressure I'm under? David didn't say, do you know? I, you know, for years, I had to dodge the spears of Saul. And you're going to come in here and accuse me of something? What am, I, what am I expressing to you? Somebody who is what? They got a hard neck. Well, you don't know what this person did to me and that person. Let me help you with something. You have done the same things. Every person in this place, every person on the planet has hurt somebody else. 
Every, there is only one perfect person. And his name is Jesus. I have done things in my life. I mean, I just told you a little bit. I didn't even tell you the other stuff. And I won't. So don't come ask. <laughs> don't bother. Why? Because I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I went from Saul to Paul. I actually thought about, seriously thought about changing my name the other day. <laughs> Why? They did it in the New Testament. <laughs> in other words, Saul was a stiff neck in the Old Testament. What was David? He was pliable. It wasn't that he made a mistake, guys. Listen, listen, listen. Look at me. It wasn't that he made a mistake. It's that he repented. The Lord is not asking you to be perfect. He's asking you to be pliable in your heart so that, and open to him so that he can make you perfect. People approach grace and the empowerment of God the wrong way. They approach it with like, I made all these mistakes and now I'm saved so I'm not going to do this. You only not as you know the Lord in you. It took me a while to become more sanctified after I got saved. It took me a while. Why? The Lord working with me. I'm learning to live from the inside out, not from the outside in. Do you know, when somebody used to make me mad, I would plot their demise. Am I the only one? <laughs> Maybe I am. I don't know. <laughs> I would plot their demise. I would look for, think about, look for ways to make them go away. Not like, you know, yeah, not like I was part of the mob. Just, I don't know that I ever got that far. Maybe I did, I don't know. I don't remember it specifically. But after I got saved, those thoughts would come, but in my heart I'm like, nope, that's not right. Because I, I was talking to Mike the other day, we were talking about something, and my old nature was, if you come at me, I'm thinking about how I can come stronger. How many can identify with this? Am I like the, I got to be speaking to somebody. Well, it's at least half the crowd. The rest of you, bless you all, and you don't have to deal with this. So in other words, my, my nature was not to feel sorry for myself. Now, in a sense, it could be that way, but it wasn't that way totally. It was, you're going to wish you didn't. I'm nailing somebody here. <laughs> you're going to wish you never. That's how I, but, and that carried over, and it took a long, it's taken a long, I shouldn't say a long time. It's taken some time to go, to, to realize Jesus says, Sean, I died for you while you were a sinner. We'll end with this. We were singing that song. There's no, what? There's no mountain you won't climb up. There's no wall you won't, what? I'm not the worship leader, so. But we were singing that song, right? Talking about the Lord and what he does. How many have experienced that? His love, he just goes and goes and goes and goes. Do you know while I was standing there, the Lord said to me, I'm looking for people that will do that with me. Hoo-wee. In other words, we become the wall breakers, the mountain climbers, those that will go in his power to reach those who were in our position. And that is somebody who is who understands and has grown in their relationship with the Lord to where it's no longer about can I defend me? It's now about can we get you saved? Does that make sense? Can we now help you see the light that we live in? Does that make sense? 
Because how many know this? And you can stand with me. Are you doing keys, Shane? You can. <clears throat> how many know this? That... Most of the time, I believe, people are actually deceived. They're more deceived than anything. I know, I know that people can get to that place where that scripture says they become so stiff-necked, but I don't believe most people are there. I believe most people are living in darkness. And missing light. Amen? So I want to do this. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I just want to give you an opportunity to hear from the Lord. First of all, let's do this. Let's just, if you just agree in your heart, I want to pray this. Just agree in your heart if you would. If it applies to you. Father God, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask and come into agreement with this group of people that you'll continue to reveal to us the areas that we need to repent, we need to change. Lord, we don't want to stay the same. We want the fruits of righteousness to come forth. We want the fruits of righteousness in our lives, the resurrection that you... uh, that you placed within us to be the shining light in everything we do. Lord, we want to declare with Paul even greater and continuing to that we are forgetting the things that are behind, that we're pressing on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, that we are, we are Lord, it, it, declaring with the, the Holy Spirit, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. So Lord, show us that, reveal that to us. Help us see it. And by your grace in showing us, and then by your grace in empowering us, we will act upon that grace, and we will see the change and the growth that you have paid for. So we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Lastly, I just want to do this. If you're in here today and you've never given your life to the Lord, you can't put a date on it, you can't put a time on it, or you've walked away from the Lord and you know you need to recommit to Him, if that's you, would you raise your hand where you're at and I'll pray with you. uh, Ushers, if you could help me if there's anybody with their hand raised. I don't see anybody, but... Okay, praise God. Let me do this too. Because I'm going to be up here for prayer afterwards. If you don't, didn't want to raise your hand, but you want to come up and see me after, you can. And we'll pray with you. God loves us so much. Let's just do this. Let's just lift our hands to Him. But just say this. Just say out, just out of your own heart. Say, Father God, I'm available. Speak to me. Speak through me, Lord. I'm your house. And I desire to have in manifestation the fullness of your glory flowing through me. Lord, in this season, we receive peace. I just, I'm going to do this for your families. I just pray over every family represented right here. Lord, and those that are watching by live stream as far as Facebook goes, Lord, I pray for every family, everyone, Lord, that you will minister supernatural peace. Lord, a miraculous level of your peace by your spirit and your angels, Lord, ministering to families over this season. We just thank you for it, Father. We believe for it for ourselves and for others. And we bless you and praise you for it. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said, amen. Well, God bless you guys. We have Christmas Eve service, 4.30 on Tuesday. And uh, we will see you then. Have a great rest of your day and week.